Hello and welcome to my channel, Medicine with Dr. Morin. One of the things that I come across on a daily basis in my medical practice is something called metabolic syndrome. It's very common. It affects more than 20% of adult Americans and it increases with age. It actually affects about 40% of people when they get into their 60s and 70s. Now, it markedly increases the risk of someone developing heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. People often hear the words metabolic syndrome, but what does it actually mean? Well, a syndrome in medicine is typically a grouping of signs or symptoms, which when present indicate that you have the syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is diagnosed if you have three or more of the following five signs. These are quite easy things for you to check yourself if you have access to your recent blood work, which most people do nowadays. The first sign is abdominal obesity, a waistline of 40 inches or more for men and 35 inches or more for women, which is measured across the belly is considered positive. The second sign is a blood pressure above 130 over 85, or if you're on blood pressure lowering medications. The next is triglyceride level above 150 milligrams per deciliter, or if your metric greater than 1.7 millimole per liter. A low high density lipoprotein level or HDL cholesterol of less than 40 milligrams per deciliter in men, which is 1.0 millimoles per liter in metric, or under 50 milligrams per deciliter or 1.3 millimoles per liter in women. Finally, a fasting glucose level above 100 mg per deciliter or greater than 5.5 millimole per liter, or if you're already on glucose lowering medications, count as positive. So if you have three, four, or five of these, you have metabolic syndrome. If you have zero, one, or two, then you don't. Now the goal, if you have any of these signs, is actually try to normalize them. The exact cause of metabolic syndrome is not known in 2022, but many of the above signs are caused by lifestyle factors, including diet, activity, sleep, and perhaps genetic factors as well. These signs are associated with insulin resistance, a term that you'll hear frequently. And as I've mentioned before, this can lead to heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, as well as other things like fatty liver, which could lead to cirrhosis and liver failure. In addition, gallstones, kidney disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, sleep problems, and some forms of cancers can develop in people with metabolic syndrome. So who might be at risk for metabolic syndrome? Well, as I've mentioned earlier, the older you are, the more likely it's the case. African Americans and Mexican Americans are more likely to get metabolic syndrome, with African American women more likely than African American men. A body mass index of greater than 25, which means you're either overweight or obese, is also another thing. The body mass index is a measure of body fat comparing your height and weight. I have a video on body mass index on the channel, and there's a link in the description below to that. Now, people with either a personal history of diabetes or family history of diabetes are also at risk. Other factors include stress, smoking, high saturated fat diet, heavy drinking of alcohol, or sedentary lifestyle. Now, how do we treat metabolic syndrome? As I've mentioned before, lifestyle changes are needed. People need to adopt a diet that limits processed food, saturated and trans fats, red meat, sodium, and sugar. Diet, of course, must be individualized, but ultimately consuming whole grains, fruits, and vegetables is important. Also, losing extra weight. Things like intermittent fasting, where you restrict your caloric intake to certain times of the day, for example, at lunch or at supper, which would be two meals a day, can be helpful. So this would be a two meal a day type of diet with an 18 hour fast from supper to noon the next day. Now zero calorie drinks can be consumed throughout the day, but essentially you're skipping breakfast in this type of intermittent fasting or time restricted eating as it's often also called. Now some people do well with restricting carbohydrates down to 50 grams per day with a low carb diet. I do have a video on that on the channel. Good general advice though, is for people not to consume calories after supper. Speak to your doctor to get specific dietary advice if you do have metabolic syndrome. A dietitian may also be helpful. Regular physical exercise is recommended by the US Activity Guidelines slide that you see here. 
Now, this means two and a half to five hours of moderate intensity exercise a week. Chores count towards this, such as pushing the lawnmower for 30 minutes. For example, that would count for 30 minutes. Now, they also recommend, in addition, two sessions of strength training exercise a week. This would be weights or resistance bands, something along those lines. Now, other things that are important are for you to quit smoking if you smoke, as well as to cut back on the amount of alcohol that you consume. You need to work with your doctor to manage your glucose, cholesterol, and blood pressure, and make sure you take your medications as prescribed. The hope, though, is always that lifestyle modifications should be tried aggressively at first. I prefer to see patients make appropriate lifestyle changes so we don't need to prescribe medications. Life is always better if you can manage your health without medications. Thanks a lot for joining me today on Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin. Get healthy and stay healthy.